Welcome to our lecture online, and here's our third example of how to deal with torque, another physics problem, and uh, let's take a look at our problem here. You can see that we have a beam which is angled at an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal. We have a cable attached to the end of the beam, and then we have a weight hanging down from the edge of the beam, and you're supposed to find the tension in this cable. All right, so that is an obvious tor torque problem. We have to pick a good pivot point. So let's pick a pivot point here at the end of the beam. And let's call that pivot point number one. And let's try to solve the problem this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to find all the torques, the sum of all the torques. And uh, when we do so on this pivot point right here, number one, uh, this should add, all to add up to zero. So let's identify all the torques here. Well, the first one would be the weight of this mass right here. So the weight here would be mg. That's the force pulling down on the edge end of the beam. And we need to find the distance from the pivot point to the line of action of the force. That's this distance right here. And let's call this distance D1. So this force will cause our first torque. The second force will be the weight of the beam. And we'll pick the center mass of the beam right at the halfway point. So the weight of the beam right here would be big MG and uh, the pivot point is right here. So this would be the perpendicular distance from the pivot point to the line of action of that force. We'll call that D2. And there's D1, okay? And finally, we have one third item here, which is the tension of the cable, which is pulling in this direction. And we need to find the perpendicular distance from the pivot point to the line of action of the force. So since the tension is in this direction, perpendicular to that would be this distance right here, and we'll call that D3. Okay, and so this is D1, that's D2, and that's D3. So now we can go ahead and set up the equation. The sum of the torques add up to zero, so zero must equal, all right? And also we need to define the direction of the torque. So I'm going to call a clockwise torque a positive direction and a counterclockwise torque a negative direction. That is really arbitrary. Uh, some textbooks do it the other way around. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to take, uh, by definition, the torque is force times distance. So we have the mg times the perpendicular distance from the, uh, point, from the um, pivot point to the line of action of the force. So we call that d1. And now direction-wise, notice that if this was the only force acting on this beam, it would cause the beam to rotate in a clockwise direction. So we call that positive torque. So we make that a positive mg times d1. Okay, the mass of the beam here, the weight of the beam, will also cause the beam to rotate this way if that was the only force. So we have a plus big MG, the weight of the beam, which is the force acting downward, times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the beam, which is D2. And notice that if I plug in D1, D2, and D3, without first finding that, it's a lot easier to set up the equation. And finally, we have the tension of the cable, which would pull the beam in the opposite direction, the negative direction. That's a minus torque minus the tension, which produces the force on that cable, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, which is D3. All right. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the tension right there. And now to do that, we need to find the value for D1, D2, and D3 with the variables given. All right. Let's do that. So to find D1, the distance right here, I'm going to draw this triangle here separately. So we have the triangle right here, where the, um, the hypotenuse is the length of the beam. This side over here is D1, and that side right there, that's an unknown side, but we don't really need that. We do have the angle right here, which is theta1. And so you can see that D1, since it's adjacent to the angle, is equal to the hypotenuse L times the cosine of that angle. So D1 is equal to L times the cosine of theta1. That's how we find D1, and that will be substituted for D1 over here. Now finding D2, we need this little triangle right here. Okay, so let's draw that little triangle. Notice that the hypotenuse in this case will be half the length of the beam because we know that this acts at the center mass. So this, this is L over two. This angle is also theta sub one, and this is the distance we're looking for, D2. And also here we can say that D2 is equal to the hypotenuse, L over two, times the cosine of theta sub two, and that will then be substituted for D2 in here. So, so far, so good. Now for the third distance, D3. 
For that, we need this triangle right here. Um, hmm, maybe not, maybe not. Let's see. Well, let's, let's draw the whole triangle and let's draw, draw the three and see what we can figure out here. So we have this angle right here. Uh, we have this distance right here. Then we have the beam, which is like this. And we need this distance here. This is D3. Okay, let's now also write down everything we know. The angle between the beam here, which has length L, and the horizontal axis, that's angle theta 1. The angle here is theta sub 2. And, uh, hmm, the right angle of the triangle here is this angle right here. That's a 90 degree angle. So if this is the hypotenuse L of this triangle right here, and this is D3, we need either this angle in here or we need that angle over there. Either one. So how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, let's look at it this way. If the angle from there to there is 45 degrees, and the angle from there to there is 30 degrees, then the angle between them must be the difference between these two, which is 15 degrees. That means this angle over here, let's call it phi, that must therefore equal 15 degrees, which is 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. So again, from the horizontal to this line right here is 45 degrees. From the horizontal to this line there is 30 degrees. So the angle between those two lines must be the difference of these two angles, 15 degrees. And so since now D3 is the opposite side to this angle right there, we can then say that D3 is equal to the hypotenuse, which is L, times the sine of phi, this angle up here, the 15 degree angle. All right, so we can plug those values for D1, D2, and D3 now in our equation. And when we do that, we get 0 equals mg, little mg, times D1, which is L cosine of theta sub 1, plus big mg, times d2, which is L over 2, times the cosine of theta sub 2, minus the tension, times d3, which is L times the sine of phi. Now, before we do anything else, notice that every term has an L in it, so we can cancel out the L from every term. Just simply divide both sides of the equation by L. And then we can bring the minus t sine phi over on the other side and make that positive. So now we have positive t times the sine of phi is equal to mg times the cosine of theta 1 plus mg. Now, let's see here. I think I have an error because this is supposed to be theta 1. I wrote theta sub 2, so make that theta sub 1 and make this theta sub 1. I just realized that, that we're dealing with the same angle here. The angle for the uh, made by the beam and this mass here is the same as the angle made for this force right here. So we're dealing with the same angle, and that was theta sub 1. All right, so mg times the cosine of theta sub 1, and of course the minus t at sine theta, uh, sine phi went to the other side. And then finally, I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of phi. So divide this by the sine of phi and bring it over here, divide this by the sine of phi. So finally now we have t equals to this, and now we just have to plug in what those are equal to. So continuing on, the tension equals small mg, so small m is 2,000 kilograms, so we have 2,000 kilograms times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the cosine of 45 degrees, cosine of 45 degrees, and then we add to that the big mass, which is 5,000 kilograms, also times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times also the angle of 45 degrees, the cosine of that angle, 45 degrees, and then the whole thing divided by the sine of phi, which was 15 degrees. And now all we need is a calculator to figure out what it is equal to. And we used to do that with slide rules. Hmm, a little bit more difficult back then. Well, 2,000 times 9.8 times the cosine of 45 degrees plus, plus 5,000 times 9.8 times the cosine of 45 degrees equals, and then we divide that by the sine of 15 degrees. Divided by sine of 15 degrees equals, and the tension is equal to 
187,419 newtons. Now, of course, that's way too many significant figures. We were given information down two significant figures. Maybe that's four significant figures, two significant figures. So if you want to write that correctly with the correct number of significant figures, you write T is equal to 1.9 times 10 to the fifth newtons. And that's really the more accurate way of writing it because all those significant figures don't mean much if we didn't get the same number of significant figures in the original information. But anyway, quick review. Now notice we have kind of an interesting torque problem here. We need to find the tension in the cable. We picked the pivot point, then we determined the forces acting on the beam. We have one force here, we have a second force there, we have a third force, the tension in the cable here, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for the tension in the cable, right there. Then we determine the distances from the line of action of each of the force to the pivot point. Here's D1, here's the D1, D2, and D3. I always recommend that you just simply put D1, D2, and D3 in the equation. We then sum up all the torques, remembering that clockwise is positive, counterclockwise is negative, or if you like the other way around, you can do that. Then you determine, by drawing some nice little triangles, what the distances are, D1, D2, and D3. Then you plug that into the equation, solve the variable you're looking for, plug in the numbers, and there you go. And that's how you do this torque problem. All right, let me see if I can come up with some more examples for you.